Okay, and uh, we are back here. So where are we? We're at the uh, basically. Let's just go back and turn some of these layers on and off. So you can see silhouette, detail, atmosphere, value balance, and starting at uh, further smaller details. Right, zoom in here. Let me just purge the RAM real quick as well. So as you guys know, in Photoshop you can do this thing called purge, purge all. You dump everything in memory. So be careful of doing that uh, while you're in the middle of a painting because you'll dump all your history. So if you do want to do undo a bunch of times, if you use the purge option, it'll be all gone. But it does free up a ton of RAM. Right? I, th I believe it also dumps stuff in the clipboard. So if you're doing a copy of something, it's gone as well. Okay, so back to this painting. Uh, this is a value balance, darkening of some of the area. So remember when two surfaces come together, light has a harder chance to get back out of it. So it tends to be a little darker. So when two objects are close to each other, or once, for example, a thing sitting on top of a table, uh, where the two objects meet tends to be a little bit darker area. Simply because light has, um, let me see, let me just do quick notes on this. It's important to talk about these little fundamental stuff. Okay, let me get a bigger brush here, right? So this is bounce light going to here, and then bounce light is gonna boom, 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 right? As the closer it is gets to an object, what happens is the light has gets trapped inside and can't escape as much as these big surfaces, right? More light rays reach your eye. So when these surfaces, these dark areas here, are all from when two objects are basically coming very, very close to each other. You can see here, on off, what that does, right? Less opportunity for the light rays to reach your eyes. And more atmosphere balance. So I also have my black and white uh, layer here. So you can turn this on. So you can always check the value as we go. More balance, right? Ton of atmosphere balance. Uh, this painting was a little bit challenging because of the scale, the massive scale of this creature. If this this alien here was actually very small, like the size of a human, I don't need to do this atmosphere balance because it'll make it look too big, right? So we're only doing this because of the size. It's like rendering a giant New York skyscraper in the scene. It will have the same effect because simply it's too big. Okay, so all three of these layers are actually no painting. It's just value balance, as you can see here. Right, locally balancing because overall it's it's too light. What I'm doing is locally balancing to each other. What that means is like his mouth to his area down here, oops, like this area, his mouth to each other. They have value, but as a whole, compared to the background, it's a little too light. But we can always adjust that later. Especially this guy sits on his own layer, so it's very easy to adjust. Okay, now we go in there and add some just little really detailed highlights, like these little spikes. Let me just zoom in here. You can see to start giving him scale. For something like this big to work, big as in uh, the size, the design of this creature, you really have to go in there and add some very micro sized details to give that away. See like these little spikes and all these things. So he feels massive as a result. Right, even more little details. Zoom in to show you guys. So this is the kind of stuff that takes time. So setting this painting up in the beginning, because again, this was done in front of the class. The setup for this, basically, when we got to about oh, this stage here, didn't take too long. Okay, you could do this fairly quick. You, know, you could do that just in an hour, two hours or so. But this kind of stuff, this kind of miniature detail stuff, there's nothing you could do about it. It just consumes time, because the more you add these little tiny things in here, each little brush mark is going to take you a second to do, two, three seconds to do. So right here is already like a few minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, right? So you add it together. So uh, these detailed paintings, the time comes from doing these little tiny little things. The setup, uh, if you do it right from the beginning, is not the part that eats up a lot of your time, but essentially it is the most important though. Because once you have that, adding these little things, it's just a matter of time. So if you have three days to do this rendering, we can go in there and just make this stuff super, super detailed, super tight if you want, but all the values are already there anyway, so it's not that hard to do. So it's just a uh, time constraint. Okay, here I uh, added some texture work, so let me expand that out. All right to give that fine detail. This again was to uh, save a little bit of time. By putting these textures in there, it gives me freebie ultra detail. So you can zoom in here, you can see some skin uh, markings in here, and especially this belly area. Right? So you can see this very fine level of detail. And it's really cool to see because that contrasts nicely with the ground, the outside environment to give it a, a lot of scale. Let me just turn these off, you can see what there. So the first one I did was this belly. And this texture actually comes from a, a flower, uh, the inside of a flower somewhere. So let me see if I turn it to normal. You can see this is some kind of flower petal. 
so I just use. So again, as a concept designer, your job is to really see extraordinary things, right? Anything. You should be able to look at an image and go, hey, that'll work pretty well in this context, right? You don't use it one-to-one, -one, like if it's a flower, then you texture to a flower. You have to train your eyes and brain to see outside the box, to see things in everything, right? Like these little details here, this comes from a blade of a, of a jet, right? Like some kind of probably 737 uh, intake uh, that I use because because I can see it's very nice, very nice details. So I put those in there, and then this stuff is just some kind of uh, I think it's from uh, water. This texture here, it's an inverse of a water texture, you know, swimming pool. You can see here, but if you inverse it, it looks nice. It looks like skin of some type. You see, so I zoom in, and then this texture here is some kind of uh, same thing. It's the Re inverse inverse of the previous texture so it's just swimming pool water that we keep inversing and kind of manipulating to get this effect and then painting his eyeballs in a little bit give it an iris and those kind of things also from uh, uh, texture the texture of here maybe it's an eye I'm not sure what I use here I don't think so it looks like some kind of just a metallic uh, material here okay so that's the texture layer so that gives you some freebie um, details and then we continue adding further details on top of that so, for example, refining some of these little spikes on his legs, right? And also using these uh, details to merge the textures together. For example, here we put some highlights over this, this belly area. So, because if it, when you use uh, pure photo textures, they sometimes don't blend. So you can see here, I'm trying to blend those things together. Those that that 737 fan blade here with some paint will trick the human eye to think that oh that's you can't tell where the texture starts and where the paint starts right you want to create that type of effect. This texture I'm not even sure what this texture is oh some kind of uh, highlights in the eyeball. Picking up the sun don't forget if you have a sun there's only one right and when you have like for outdoor environment and you have like say something like this it starts to be kind of weird because then you're talking about three, four different suns. Um, so you could, you could get that kind of effect in the photo studio, but if it's a natural environment um, lit by a, a sun, then it's only just one. Right? So in this case, it's coming at, at about this angle here, hitting the eye. More highlights, pop them out. This layer, I'm not even sure what's in it. Maybe blank. Sometimes I have blank layers simply because I'm teaching, and uh, the students ask a question right when I make a new layer, and then you forget to paint whatever uh, you are trying to do. So that's kind of uh, what that is. All right. So that's our alien guy on his own layer. Boom, boom, and then this little layer, some kind of environment adjustment. So this is layer I put in the middle. You see. So here's the alien. So you can see. Let me just shut some stuff down here. I have the alien. This adjustment layer, which I'll talk about in a bit. And then I have this environment layer that's sandwiched in the middle. This layer is basically stuff that kind of affects both. Remember I talked about this very early on uh, when I started this tutorial, was that when you have these kind of things where the character with the vehicles that can be extracted from the environment, it tends to be a little hard to paint because things like fog, smoke, these birds, for example, interact with both. They overlap your character and the background, especially things like uh, volumetric fog. So I want to create those and put them on a separate layer you see here's the final image by the way so this way I can always take them out right see here's the birds and atmosphere taken out without affecting neither my character or my background so I can always still extract my character out and those birds and stuff would just go away you see I can still extract them out so that's just a little production tip uh, because I do need this layer this layer helps the whole thing gel together without it it won't feel like this character standing or, or floating above this uh, farmland area out here right I need that atmosphere but I don't want to paint that atmosphere into the character. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys, right? So instead of putting it into my alien layer, which I have to go in and shut off, I keep it sandwiched between. You can see here, the layer, here's the alien, here's the background. This is in between both, right? It goes over both um, of these layers. So it affects both, okay? And the adjustment layer affects everything in between. So it's sandwiched in the middle. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, these are more production tips that you would, you basically learn on your own when you start working on projects of how to manage your layers so you don't end up doing stuff or wasting a lot of time. Okay, but let's go back to our alien. So, whoops, do we leave a layer out? Whatever layer that was, let's turn it back on. So this environment layer, so let's open this up to see what's in here. Not too much stuff. Um, I think atmosphere fog will be the first thing I'll add. You can see here. So this gels the background and the sky and the alien all together couple more. I lit up this side just a bit to give it some atmospheric haze, the left upper left side here. 
right? Just bind it up a little bit to again to try to create because it looked kind of dark here.